So in this bubble video, what we're going to take a look at is how to make it so you only have unique inputs. Um, so what I mean by that is I'm going to make an input here. And I'm going to make a repeating group real quick. So I'll grab my repeating group, make this. And I'm just going to basically build out uh, quickly what I want to do. And this is in um, a bubble database I use for um, just making test videos. So you may see some uh, types of data that we aren't going to use in this. But let's make a new type of data. So let's grab a button. This button will work with that input. So great. So, data button will be the data creation button. Okay. And then I have an input here. It's just going to be an input. This data creation button, I want to start and edit a workflow for. And what I want to do is I want to create a new thing. My new thing will be a new type here. And this new type will be data testing. Okay. So I then have title, create new field. And I need this just to be a text field. Okay. And then I also may want to have it um, have another field later, and I can add that. Um, when I want to, but for now, let's keep it simple. Let's just have it say title and we'll do title will be input a, which is the only input we have on this form or on this page, uh, input a's value. So whenever we push this create button, it's going to create data with that. And I want it then to also reset relevant inputs. So I'll push create, it will create it. And I'm going to make this repeating group a little wider because I'm going to add a button in here to help us make this faster. But I'm going to grab text first. And I'm going to drop it here. When I drop this in here, I want to make sure that little line right there turns red. This will let me know I'm putting it in the repeating group, which allows it to show up here. And then I want to do dynamic text. So this sells thing. But if you think we haven't actually given it a thing yet here. So right, this box is red. So I almost started making text for nothing. So let's go here. Um, I want to do, I just created data testing. So data testing is what I'm going to make this. Do a search. We'll do a search for data testing. I don't need any constraints on it. We're doing data testing. So anything that's data testing will show up here. And now I want to do my dynamic data. So current cells, data testings, title. Great. And then also, I'm going to add a button here just in case I want to delete these. So I'll make this the delete button. Great. And now I will double click that, and I will create a workflow for it where you can go data and things, delete thing, and it will be current cells data testing. Great. So now when I push, uh, when I create something here, it should show up here and I can delete it here. And I'll show you what I want to discuss here with creating um, data. And we can ensure that there's unique data in the database this way. So say I'm doing a bubble project where I have unique um, locations or I have a uh, unique sets of products and I don't want to accidentally enter something twice. Well, right now, if I have Parkway Ave, I can just keep entering Parkway Ave. All right, so Parkway Avenue, I can enter a whole bunch of times. I'll delete one of them. So we just have two, but I'll go back here and to my original page. And what I want to show is um, I'll pick another group, another text right here. I'll drag that up a little bit. So what I'm going to put here is dynamic data, current cells thing. I'm going to scroll all the way down to unique ID. All right. And this is how Bubble knows uh, that these are all different things, even if this line is the same. 
But a lot of times people don't think about when they first start working with Bubble is that Parkway Avenue, well, I have Parkway Avenue. Why? How can I have two Parkway Avenues? How does the system know uh, to delineate between the two? Like, how does it know the difference? Well, the difference is this unique value. So everything you create inside a Bubble is going to have this unique value. This unique value is going to give you the ability to designate this specific item. So if you wanted to call this item, you could call this. This is the only value you really would need to know from this item to call this value and then you could pull parkway avenue or any other any other um attribute you have saved to this thing you could pull from first knowing this because you would do a search for this type of thing and then you would search by the unique item and then you would have that parkway avenue um, but these two numbers are different. These two numbers are different because they're two different things. So how do we make it so I can only make one Parkway Avenue? Oh, we can go here and we can do conditional. So I want to be able to say, you can create all the data you want, but the data all has to have unique titles. So one way I can do that is I can make it so this button doesn't work anymore if the data is the same. So what I would do is I'll go to conditional and I would say, here's a new condition, turn it on. And I want when input A, which is this input value is do a search, data testing, title equals input A's value, close. And then I want to grab the first item's title. So what I'm doing there is I am doing a search for data that has the same title as what I've entered. And then I'm saying of that list, the first item, which would be the one that would match it because we're going to have all only unique items in here anyway that items title if it's the same so if these are matching values i'm going to do something and this is what i'm going to do i'm going to make the element not clickable and i got to make sure i check this box and by doing that this button won't work but i also should say something to the user so i'm going to change the, the text is i'm also going to go ahead and i'm going to add a tip so where is the tip button? Tooltip on hover, great. So for my data, I'll do must be a unique location. There, must be a unique location. Uh, and tooltip, this data already exists. Please enter a unique data type title there. Perfect. So how is this going to look? Let's try Parkway Avenue again. Look, must be a unique location. I can't enter them. Now, if I delete these two, I can create it again. And now I can't. So this is just a quick way to stop duplicate data from being created. And I can't create Apple because I already created Apple. So that's just a quick way to make it so that you are not duplicating data inside the system. Um, there is a couple flaws in this. One is that if I put a space after Apple, I will have Apple space, whereas this is just Apple. Um, you also can have it so that if I did okay, avenue, all lowercase. Um, so there's flaws in this method, but for the most part, it will it can solve for a lot of uh, unique data problems. You have to remember when Bubble, Bubble is looking for unique data, they're looking for punctuation, they're looking for capital letters, they're looking for spaces, because to the computer, 
a space is a value. See, there's something in the code that says this exists. When we visually look at it, it says nothing. So it's important to remember that. All right, I hope this was useful as a way to make form fields um, be unique values. Um, this is the simplest way I know of to do it. Um, and again, it does have some slight flaws.